is this thing on? Are we on? Is the camera on? Oh, welcome to Tessa. Yes, it's on, and this is the fourth, fourth episode of Tessa Talks Online during lockdown. I am your host, Libha Mutong, and this is us. On today's episode, we will be talking about leadership. It is a leadership workshop that I'm sure we all need because um, it plays a vital role. We need to know if you're a leader or a follower. That way you know not to mix things up and get things mixed up. But I'm not alone. I am with my street anchor, the news anchor, Unasi Pimpiti, who is that? Nasi P, give us the news. Thank you so much, Lebu. Hello, everyone. And... Today we're going to talk about something that is very important as we all TASA members and we know how important leadership is to us. So before we go into depth with everything, I just want to share with you guys or give you sort of a throwback on the past and current leaders of TASA. So as you can see, we have our former NEC members live on screen and obviously they have displayed qualities of leaders which we'll learn about today and these are our current NEC members and I just want you guys to pay full attention to the teachings of today or the information that will be shared today by our very own guest which you guys will see. So on our social media platforms we asked several questions. The first poll was asking about sorry, just one second. The first poll was asking, do all leaders have to occupy a position to be called leaders? Some said yes and some no. But statistically, mostly said no. So we're going to see from the following responses why. The next question was asking the viewers to describe what a leader is according to the leader's own findings. And we have a couple of responses here. A leader is a person who is able to listen to people's views and problems. A leader is one who is selfless and puts him or herself before the people he or she needs. He or she needs, sorry. A leader is the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal. And I totally agree with that one because you can't basically lead alone. You need to have people that look up to you. And another viewer said, this is a very difficult question to answer. And hopefully from the rest of the show, you will have enough information to basically make you understand what the importance of a leader. The following question that we asked 
is what advice can you give someone to become a better leader? With this question, some of you might already be leaders. So this question is mostly relevant to you. How can you become a better leader? Never decide on behalf of the people you are representing unless it's an emergency. So I felt that this is important as you might find, um, I don't want to say bad leaders, but those kind of leaders that make decisions on their own and not consult the people that they're actually leading for. The next question was asking about the values leaders should align themselves with and the findings as follows. A leader must be a good negotiator and must have respect for the people he or she leads. And I believe that without respect, you obviously, you need to have res respect for yourself first and respect the people that you're working with. The second um, feed, um, feedback was accountability, passion, consistency, and love. Leaders should align themselves with the following values. Number one, respect, as we have mentioned already. You cannot lead without respect. Integrity, of course. Courage, it doesn't mean you have to be too bold as well as discipline. I believe that is one thing that leaders all have to have. You have to have discipline. And I, I just want to put a lot of emphasis on discipline because you, you, can't, you can't make good decisions or you can't make decisions that will benefit people other than benefiting yourself without the discipline. Do you think TASA can help anyone become a leader? I'm sure you guys viewing, uh, most of you are TASA members and you can also testify on this. How has TASA or how can TASA help anyone become a leader? Yes, through learning from those who are in front of him. As the, the PEC learns from the MEC and the BEC learns from the PEC and the members from the BEC. Yes, through serving others, you gain passion and yeah, gain passion to lead. I think it just got a bit cut off there. This viewer says, yes, it does. TASA is a safer platform for individuals to develop basic skills, leadership included here, because you are given a platform to lead but with no pressure or no consequences should you fail to lead. Therefore, ukula by choice, meaning to grow, you grow by choice. And that is the best way of mastering any skill when you are doing it by choice. And that's what we've seen throughout our TASA members. Most of the time that individual, that individual isn't even noticing, Uguti, I'm growing a skill. Um, that means yeah, that I'm growing a skill. They most of the time will realize later in life that Utasa Wangi Kulisa La Nala. So basically Tasa provides. And I agree with that because I myself am a living testimony that by by being delegated to do work in Tasa, you might not see it right now, but in future when you're actually given a, a um, uh, CEO position or manager managerial position, realize that, hey, I actually gained something. Yes, the attributes that make you a leader are evident in TASA, although you may not be aware when you are new in the association. When you become an executive, you get to achieve the full experience. All those challenges shape you as a person, and in the end, you become the great leader that you are. Shout out to all the great leaders out there. TASA makes you productive. All the operations mold you to become a leader, even outside TASA. And entering work already, you are equipped with all those characteristics. You have to offer solutions and advise when members report, and that boosts your leadership skills. 
In addition, you become emotionally intelligent. And emotionally, in, emotional intelligence is one of the one of the key um, um, characteristics that that um, that companies are looking for when they're hiring at the moment. If you look at the stats, how has Tasa developed your leadership skills? Here are the responses. It has taught me accountability, being accountable for something. Of course, it's something that. Obviously, you need to have as a leader. It has taught me to be responsible and independent. Yes, by being able to take my responsibility, being BEC as a member, take part as, I think that also got cut off, but basically um, that BEC member um, has managed to take part as much as um, he or she could within the association. Yes, TASA provides you the qualities to become a great CEO, like we've already mentioned in the previous slide. You need to be able to communicate with people as a leader, no matter the channel. So whether it is, it, whether it is physical communication when the person is right in front of you, which we don't have that right now, and you need to also be able to be a leader, um, even without physical contact. TASA allows one to build public speaking and accountability. What characteristics does a great leader have? Skill and love, passion and love, honesty, fair, fairness, discipline, and passion and passionate. As you can see that love is dominating as well as passion. He or she consults before taking any decisions. Yes, we do not want any rash decisions to be made. Um, leadership qualities, of course. Good decision taker, problem solver, deal with critical situations. And that, my fellow TASA members, brings us to the end of my bulletin. And we will hand over to Labour to take us through the rest of the show. Thank you. Yes, and that is the word from the street. So what we have now, um, basically, people are saying that um, a leader does not need to be in position for them to be a leader. So what exactly is a leader? I'll start with the dictionary definition. A leader is a person who leads, commands a group or an organization or a country. Well, people tend to put people in leadership without even knowing if they are capable of the position, right? But a leader is someone that creates an aspiring vision of the future and leads it through people to get the work done. In most cases, we have high expectations of expecting whoever is in leadership or in power the highest rank which is the leader to do the work to make sure that the work is done no matter how where and in most cases they end up doing the job themselves but instead they do not understand the concept of the leader so we have leader myths there are myths that people believe about a leader is this that is why we call them a myth it's not a fact we have three leaders are born and not made you heard from Nasipi that we went to the street to ask, are leaders made or born? And majority of the people believe that leaders are made. Leaders have all the answers. There's another myth. Lastly, the last myth says, leaders are always in the spotlight, meaning they are in position, they have the title. But not to waste any more of your time, our guest today, <laughs> our guest today is someone that we all know quite well. He is an LLB graduate at the University in Western Cape. He is a registered student at the University of and patient guys. But he's mostly known as a now chairperson of on the leadership workshop, Siko Siamo.
Um, hi guys, uh, thanks a lot Lebu for the wonderful introduction. Um, I believe I'm no stranger to the many viewers uh, present here today. I'd like to also thank this opportunity and uh, you know actually to deal with a very um, topical issue of leadership um, whereby we are faced with many challenges in the organization and outside as well as in the country. So we need more leaders um, who show initiative. And um, I usually say that we are all leaders, but they are those leaders without titles. So especially in the context of TASA, we are all leaders, um, but they are those leaders specifically with titles, you know, um, they will call you chairperson or secretary and so on. Um, so just to try to sum up a workshop in uh, the few minutes that I've been given um, is to first discuss what is leadership. I think it's already been defined extensively um, that leadership is actually a process by which one person influences the thoughts, attitudes and behaviors of others. Now the key word there for me is that leadership is a process, it's not an event. That is why it's important that we, we understand that leadership is not a position. In other words, a position can be an event or can be temporary, but leadership is a process. You become a leader even before you are elected into a position of leadership. And you will remain a leader even if or long after you have been removed or vacated a position of leadership because it is a process by which that particular person influences others in thoughts, attitudes, behavior. So the another key word there is that leadership involves influence. So now as a leader, you must be able to influence others to act towards attaining a particular goal. When you are a good leader, you lead by influence and not by position. So leadership is about the influence you have rather than the position that you are holding. In other words, you can have no position at all, but still be a great leader because you still have influence. Now in the Christian context and in the Tasa context is that leadership is, is actually influencing people to do the will of God. In other words, now you become a servant, as a leader, you become a servant that is actually um, influencing people to do the will of God. You are the servant of God that is influencing the people of God to do his will. But now as a leader, you have to, especially in the context of Tasa, you must understand that you are a servant and the people that you serve, we are serving God firstly and the members that you are representing. That is the people that you serve in the position of leadership when you are a leader. And I will, I will want um, the members, the general membership, to actually regard themselves as leaders. Because leadership is actually being able to lead yourself first before you are able to lead other people. So the, the leadership title begins personally that you are able to, to lead your personal life before you can lead other people. Therefore, when I, I, I refer to leaders, I'm not me merely referring to those people who are in the executive committees, but I'm referring to anyone who regards themselves as, an, as a leader. So the, the success factors of a, of, a, of a leader is that a leader must actually be able to establish trust between the people he leads and himself. So that, in other words, the people that you lead as a leader must be actually be able to trust you, be it with their personal life, be it with their professional lives, in whatever aspect, but they should be able to open themselves up to you because they feel that element of trust. 
and it is the responsibility of the leader to establish that trust and to make sure that the people that you are leading they are they trust you in other words whatever influence you will have upon them they trust and know that it is influence that is positive and it is influence that will lead them lead them to a better place tomorrow now it is very much important that as a leader as well another key success factor is that when you are influencing people there must be a certain goal there must be a certain objective where you are you are influencing or you are you, you are leading these particular people towards and in tasa our our a particular goal and objective is our vision as an organization because i'm reminded by the by the the, the scripture of in proverbs it says where there is no vision people perish in other words now it is very much important that as a leader you live and understand the vision of the organization so that you are able to influence people towards the vision and um, people will know that i like to ask this question randomly what is the vision of tasa and people will mumble sometimes and then someone particular will stand up and says the vision of tasa is to be a mass based um, association of choice in institutions of higher learning that person if that person for me understands uh, the vision of the organization they, they have taken the first step of becoming a leader in the organization because they know what is the vision therefore they will act and influence people towards attaining the vision which is to be a mass based association of choice in all institutions of higher learning now the sec- another factor is communication people feel more confident that they can make right um, decisions so as a leader you must be able to communicate effectively so that whatever decision that is going to be taken because as a leader you don't take decisions alone you 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 take decisions as a collective so you must be able to communicate effectively so that when a decision is taken it is take, taken in a collective and everyone will feel confident that the right decision was taken a leader builds the organization by building um and developing people or developing the members of the organization when we develop the organize the members of the organization we inevitably um develop the organization because the organization organization is the members that is why we have developed and we have the focus five development of focus areas these areas aim to develop the individual in turn the individual will develop um the organization so it is important now as a leader to actually make sure that you develop people through these five pillars um so that the organ the, the the people or the members of the organization um will understand that they this is this is how the organization has contributed to them and they will in turn um also contribute to other members of the organization that will come after them um a leader in the context of the organization and in tasa is is a person that builds um the organization or that builds people based on the principles um of the organization based on the values of the organization rather than his or her personal um attributes or personality um it's very dangerous as a leader to build people towards your personality or your personal self because tomorrow you will not be a leader and there will be someone else in your position the challenge of that particular new leader in that position is that everyone um or every member will still reference you as the leader because you've built them to believe that you you've built them towards your personal self and not towards uh, the principles and the vision of the organization um all right let's move on that um we will talk about um briefly the four styles of leadership there's direct leadership um direct leadership speaks or telling leadership give a directive 
um this style of leadership is used um to to just provide a directive this must be done simple as that so it provides a clear instruction and specific direction there's a leadership style of coaching this style is actually it encourages it encourages two way communication and it helps builds confidence and motivation in the members so when you coach people you actually be actually developing them they also feel more confident to do things and to do and undertake specific tasks and then the supporting style this is when a leader and followers share decision making and also there's a delegating style and this is a type of leadership that is appropriate when members are ready to complete and accomplish a particular task and are competent and motivated to take full responsibility in other words the delegating is that you relinquish yourself of the particular duties that you are supposed to be doing and delegate someone else because of you feel that they have develop the that confidence and they are competent enough to take responsibility of a task now these four star, um, styles of leadership they do not exist exclusively otherwise they are not mutually exclusive you can as a leader apply the different four styles um simultaneously or for different situations in other words in other in 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 certain situations you will want to employ the delegating style of leadership in other instances assessing the matter you'd want to if you see these people are, are still not well developed you'd want to rather employ the coaching style of leadership so that the people may be developed so that you are able to delegate to them at a later stage uh what you must differentiate there's a big difference between a leader and um, and a boss or rather a, a, a dictator a leader is a, is a person that is actually encourages participation amongst others rather than a, a, a dictator who will want to dictate what must be done um, and who must specifically do it a boss who is is as someone who refers to to as i i did this or um i accomplished this but when you are a leader you you use the word we most of the most often um so you see you will usually say we accomplished this we are planning this um we are going to do this um so a leader is someone who gives credit most of the time rather than takes credit someone who takes credit all the time is a dictator and a boss they will t- they will take credit that i achieved this and i i, I all the time he will refer to himself um as if they are the only people that they did the task um so a leader compared to a boss once again is that he will actually show how the task is done um and then will want you to do the tasks but a boss or a dictator knows how it's done but will never show you how it's done um moving right along um there are key developmental or competencies leadership competencies that will actually assess you as a leader if you are being successful in leadership or not there are five of them the leadership competencies to, to to put it simply it's a set of knowledge skills and behaviors and attitudes that a that a person needs in order to effect to be effective in various leadership positions so it's a, it's, a, it's a various uh, factors that will actually contribute to you being an effective leader in uh, in whatever position of leadership you find yourself they are not particular or focused in tasa but they are general principles or they are general competencies that are applicable um to all leaders first of all um we have communication very important um secondly we have planning and administration 
it's uh, thirdly it's teamwork fourth one is strategic action um and then the fifth one is emotional intelligence as well as self management so i will just um speak briefly on these five um so that we get a, a ju- just an idea of what what they they, they speak about so communication comp- com- competency um is essential to effective leadership performance as leadership involves getting work done through others so you'll understand that leadership is i mean communication particularly has um many dimensions um we'll have formal communication we'll have informal communication um as well as negotiation so we must be able as a leader to effect and to 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 migrate all these types of um leadership i mean communication uh, styles so that, so that you can display effective leadership formal communication refers to you know um your your letter letter writing um uh it will uh, also refer to you know formal presentations um formal uh sort of workshops or deliveries that is formal communication and effective uh, communication is, is is the transfer of knowledge and information um which will lead to understanding between yourself and the others the others being the people that you are communicating with informal communication um it it it, it is those those conversation that you will have with your membership informal trying to build interpersonal relationships and um you you build uh, this relationship with a wide range of people um and then then them personas so as a leader it's very much important that you develop also this interpersonal relationship so that you are able to have a, a network of people so people will not view you as a boss someone they cannot talk to um someone who is um who who is not sociable but you must be able to also um communicate with people in an informal manner because i'm a chat person most of the times i'm i'm communicating in a formal spaces and formal communication um but i must be able as a leader as well to communicate with people informally if i'm done my formal communication i must be able to have a conversation with one of my members um then we have planning and administration planning and administration k in tas i play a very big role because as an organization we must plan whatever we want to do and then we must execute in our planning secondly we must we do have an administration which is which is the um, report writing um and so on and so forth so but planning administration it involves deciding what tasks need to be done monitoring how they can be done allocating resources to enable them to be done and monitoring progress to ensure that they are done this is one of the most important aspects of a leader as a leader you must when for example you are starting a year you must plan that as the pc or as the pc we are planning um we have a year plan this is what you want to achieve in this particular year then you are deciding now on what task needs to be done then you monitor those tasks how they can be done then you allocate resources as well as maybe resources will include people you allocate um those tasks to particular people and then you monitor progress throughout the year so that when the year ends you are able to evaluate yourself as leadership as, as a leadership of that particular branch or province that we planned and executed this for the year plan and um, we failed here and here but we achieved a b and c so that you can see whether you are improving or you are not doing anything at all or what needs specific focus and what you can do better for the following year um 
planning and administration, I think it involves time management. Um, so you must be able to manage yourselves within the the time that you allocate for a specific tasks. So if you have uh, uh, allocated that the task will be completed within uh, two months, then you must be able to manage yourselves within the allocated time. Then there's a um, team competency, teamwork competency. This is accomplishing tasks through small groups of people who are co collectively responsible and whose work is interdependent. In, 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 when you are in a leadership position, you will work with a, a variety and a lot of um, different committee members, for example, and all the work that you are doing is dependent on each other. So it is very much important that the work that you do, uh, you do it in a collective manner so that you, 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 once you have completed a task, the credit and the, and the, and the, and the award will go to the team and not one um, particular person. Um, so it's very much important that we create supportive teamwork um, so that we can uh, understand and work well within our teams. The strategic action competency is understanding overall mission and values of the organization and ensuring that actions and those of people led are aligned. It goes back to understanding the vision and the values of the organization. So it, it, the leadership, it's a responsibility of the leadership to make sure that the values of the organizations are adhered to and um, the overall mission of the organization and people are, aware, are well aware of it and are, are aligned to it. Um, and then there's emotional intelligence and self-management. Emotional intelligence, I think um, Nasibi did touch on it. It is um, the capacity to process emotional information accurately and effect efficiently, including capacity to perceive uh, and understand and manage emotions. So as a leader, you must be able to, to understand and manage your emotions um, because there's a lot of factors that will challenge your emotional um, uh, intelligence and uh, will challenge your emotional state. So you must be able to actually deal with your personal emotional intelligence firstly and actually develop the emotional intelligence of the members. And then what I want to focus uh, specifically is and speak of is actually spiritual um, intelligence. Spirit, um, in the spiritual intelligence, I defined it as um, the ability to understand the core purpose of your existence and your coexistence in a committee. Now, the tips of becoming um, spiritual, spiritually healthy, or that the, the, the factors that will contribute to, to your spiritual um, intelligence, because we are in a Christian organization, we lead people, um, we lead people of God. Therefore, it needs for us firstly to be of God and to be in God, so that we will be able to lead the people of God. Firstly, you must make sure that when you are leading in this organization that you pay tithe and offering, that you have the love of God in you. Because you cannot lead people if you do not have the love of God in you. Because the love of God is different from the love of man. The love of God does not discriminate and it loves everybody. That is the, 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 the principle that also um, was 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 quite um, up there in the beginning of the presentation that a leader must have love. But this kind of love is not the selective kind of love, but is the love that comes from God. Um, there are various other factors like evangelism and um, having a personal intimate and relationship with God. So it's very much important that we are spiritually intelligent when we are leading the people of God because um, they are not our people, but they are of God. So they need God. They do not need us. Um, there's a difference between a team and a group. Um, key uh, difference is that um, a group is two or more individuals who interact and influence each other and share common identity. The, the team rather is, is a group with complementary skills committed 
and mutually accountable to common purpose. So you will understand that the group has a shares a common identity, but a team they share a common purpose. And in TASA we have teams, and those teams are called the executive committees, um, which um, include the chairperson, the secretary, deputy secretary, treasurer, and public relations officer. I will just highlight the key responsibilities and attributes of a chairperson and what is expected of uh, each portfolio briefly um, because of time. The chairperson's aim should be to utilize the interest, release the potential energies of all members and to see that the committee develops a common view of its purposes and shared responsibility for leadership. So a chairperson should play a role of a stimulator and not a dictator. One of the key responsibilities or some of the key responsibilities of a chairperson is to get things done and um, to make decisions in a fair uh, manner to all uh, or, and even headed to all members of the committee. So as well, it is to stimulate and inspire others. It is to be enthusiastic and good humored to know the right answers and has a background knowledge of the group's aim and how committees function. A brief overview of the secretariat position. A secretary needs to be a practical person who pays attention to details and likes to get things done. Um, deputy secretary must be knowledgeable of the tasks and functions of the secretary and the champion of academic excellence. Treasurer, the treasurer has the responsibility of reporting the state of finances, financial affairs to the members. This is usually done by way of recommendation to a committee meeting based on the written reports and financial statements presented to the committee. The treasurer is responsible as well for raising funds for TASA. The public relations officer is responsible for marketing of TASA and ensuring TASA maintains good public image. Um, the work of, uh, of uh, these teams um, uh, and, and, and in uh, their leadership positions is to actually grow branches to a minimum of 50 active members per branch. Now the work of this committee or team is to open new branches to ensure TASA is operational and to ensure all policies and guiding documents are followed and adhered to, to encourage academic excellence in branches, to cultivate unity and fellowship in branches, thus the branches to be spiritually strong. And um, just to close off, um, one of the or some of the key factors to 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 possess to become an effective leader is to actually have a servant mindset rather than a leader mindset in other words you must understand that you are serving god and you are serving the people another effective um a tool to have is to be responsible and accountable for your actions you must develop self-awareness in all areas of your life um, so that you can develop holistically. Um, is to also have and pray for wisdom to understand people and circumstances. To encourage people to make contributions, encourage and allow creativity, and create goals, systems, and habits to succeed. Listen and communicate effectively have genuine passion and enthusiasm, be consistent in doing your work, and have a positive attitude and a positive influence on people. And that's all from me from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sikosi Yamo. That was quite insightful. That was very insightful. So um, 
if any of you have any questions regarding today's topic please be sure to use the um, chat option and ask questions for our guest to answer so i'm just going to give you guys um a summary of what we were taught today that to prove my myths from earlier that they are just myths leaders are made they are not born uh leaders uh, don't have all the answers they collaborate with the people that they serve so it's all about servantship you know and lastly leaders are not always in the spotlight they don't always have the title that i am a leader i am a chief banbani i am president i am a ceo i am chairperson and so we are not always in the spotlight and yes i said we because we were taught to regard ourselves as leaders so as he said there are five competencies uh, communication it's not a lie communication is the foundation and the key to everything it's the fundamental key to everything so please if you have questions just chat them three to five questions and the rest we will capture and answer them on our youtube channel and on our tasa newsletter so just to give you guys a briefing i also had like um, the most desirable characteristics of a leader universally it's integrity inspirational a visionary because like i said earlier a leader is someone with an inspiring vision of the future and collaborates working through people uh performance oriented being decisive uh he said something about administration which is administratively competent you are team focused and a collaborator so you see how important it is that you collaborate and work with people you are not a dictator you are not commando <laughs> you work with the people and you lead you do not take decisions emergency and by emergency okay we do not have quiz because the first of june is the first day of winter and it's the first day of us as south africa being in level three meaning guys good work i hope you guys still stay safe and clean so we are about to play a game <laughs> to make this fun just in case there are questions just to make this fun right we are about to play a game so what we're going to do is i'm going to ask each and every one of you to uh, start your videos meaning you need to make sure that um we can see you you are not hiding no profile picture you this is live right you're going to start all your videos so what's going to happen is all you have to do is tell us is to tell us who um sorry who inspires you to be a great leader how and how you can still be a great leader during lockdown in just one sentence right just one sentence i wasn't here all along <laughs> but yes that's what you do uh you we are about to play the game so i need everyone to start their videos um there's an option there there's mute start video share participants and more so please everyone start your videos so that we can see and begin the game are you guys ready can i get a yes <laughs> can i get a yes can i get a yes are you guys ready for the game okay in the meantime for anyone that has any questions please do use the chat option to ask anything and it will be answered to you live here on our live chat so we are about to begin the game so you know what to do right it's simple when your video is spotlighted you unmute and tell us who inspires you to be a great leader and how you can still be a great leader during lockdown or perhaps why they inspire you to be a great leader so are you ready are you ready i'm not going to tell you who it is it's just surprising we're going to get to you so let us begin um who inspires you to be a great leader and how can you be a great leader during lockdown just in one sentence unmute your mic <laughs> okay 
Hello everyone. I don't think you can see me. I've got a problem with my PC, so my camera is the problem. Um one person who one person who inspires me to be a great leader is my father. Why? It's because um he 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 coaches me. He's been there all my life. He knows everything. He's a great teacher. Okay, that was great. Her 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 greatest inspiration to be a great leader is her father. So we're just going to do it like this, right? Okay, let us go next. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi guys. Um I go by the name of Fuliolo Zulu. Um okay, yo, trick one. Okay, but um for me personally, Malcolm X cuz I don't know if most people know this, but he when he went in prison when he went to go his time he was not wearing glasses so during his time in prison he started reading a book right he started reading and he started reading and because the lighting was so bad he lost his sight right but after he went out of prison he was well known for what he learned inside prison not in school not anywhere else and in in adding on what u baba siego was saying is that he had a vision so basically he lost his sight to gain his vision right and i feel sometimes that's what we should also like pay attention to to the vision not what we have immediately in front of us but where we're going now um, yeah thank you thank you um okay hi everyone um for me it it has always been my mother because she is strong um in any situation she may be shaken she may be burned burned <laughs> but then she's not broken so for me that has been idol yeah thank you we have tasa lesotho in the house everybody hi <laughs> tell us more okay my name is mali buta from tasa lesotho a leader who inspires me has been ntate buyo zungula because he has shown me a clear example of being a servant as a leader and how i can be a lead a, a great leader during the lockdown is to um the ability to encourage and motivate people during this tough time i guess yeah but yeah Good evening. My name is Tabang Bangwana and the person that motivates me to be a leader is Professor Siza Nomo. Um I actually look up to him um in the manner in which he is. Um actually was inspired by him to study civil engineering after having read his biography in just the way he is the way he conducts himself the wisdom he has he has influenced me in so many ways more than um spirituality and during the lockdown i continue to be a leader by um inspiring especially the generation that is coming after me um specifically the matriculants i i conduct online tutorials and also i also tutor third year students and also motivate them since this is a difficult time um so yeah that's how i continue being a leader thank you okay um thank you very much lebu um who inspires me to be a great leader um there is over sitamba kwayo who's always uh frank on issues basically and always straightforward and informative so that is the one guy that actually influences my actions and my thoughts as which had defined a leadership in terms of being a leader thank you okay thank you very much guys <laughs> that is all we'll be taking for today there are no questions for our guest but thank you very much for always joining us if ever you have any query any questions comments or suggestions please be sure to email us at mytasaonline@gmail.com 
or and subscribe to our YouTube channel My Tasa Online so that you can get the latest videos and visuals on us as a Tasa. From us, the online team, we say thank you, salute, and good night. Let's give it over to our father to close for us. Thank you once again for the opportunity afforded to me. Yeah, I also learned a good deal from what was shared uh, when referring to leadership and all the input. So all I have to say is grow. May the Lord lead you all the time. Because now for one to be a leader, they, they should be looking up to someone and looking up to someone then will mean that you relinquish your leadership. Before being a leader, you have to be led. So by saying that, uh, I wish to share to you that uh, may you maybe share the recordings of this session with everyone else that was not part of this, because it will be very beneficial. When things return to normality, Surely there's a lot that we'll take with. So may we close with prayer. In course, my param so busu by pins been in London or say, Manjuk Zubana Parate Arme. Umosa we co say to Jesus Christ, Utano Zampulum Kulubaba no Zelan of Zamoitron, Salen and Luntrin and Kuseluxela Manjuk Zubana Parate Arme. Thank you very much. <laughs>